All right, so I'm going to just start weeks. Okay. <laughs> Two oh, weeks? Oh, you're new too? I am. She just told me it's her yes, second it day. Oh, that's, she's graphics. Oh, okay. And Jesse's a month. Okay. So, well, everybody's fairly new. Well, Dahlia's been here a while. Kelly's been here 12 years. I think she's been here 3 or 4 years. Dahlia, she came back tomorrow. But she's got a home dedication trial. Craig. Josephine. That's where someone actually cuts the ribbon and all that? Oh. So, Josephine is literally two days, but she's taking Craig's place. So, okay. Craig's been here a couple of years. And then Chuck's only been here a few months. So, he's construction. Okay. So, they keep it moving and growing and we had 16 houses last year this year we're going to close 22 houses and look to find and add any more but i am a hud certified housing counselor which means i can do this now i can counsel you before you apply so when you do apply you're more likely to get in okay so that's that makes sense yeah because i was going to ask you how does one not qualify like okay. and how do you choose if it's only 22 houses oh this gotcha ready Yes. I'm still learning, so be patient with me. Okay, no problem. Okay. So, <coughs> right now, the average median income, it used to be anything under 80%. Now we're 60 to 80. So there are some that make too little to qualify to work okay. with us. There are other programs, like the SHIP program qualifies up to 80% or up to 100%, but it changes every year the amount because of government funding and because how much homes cost and how much people are making okay so that's that's kind of what that's why it's a moving kind of thing and real estate is always it's never set in stone it's right. up and down and everywhere yeah i know i've been a realtor for 20 years really yeah. oh wow i yeah. wanted to get into that once yeah. but yeah i changed yeah. my mind <laughs> once i spoke with a couple friends there are 278,000 realtors in florida alone more than the rest of the country. Wow. So yeah, it's crazy. So there's room to grow or well, that's one thing and and they really don't study, they don't know the things that they should know. So because you can get your license so quickly now, right? Well, always. I mean when I got mine it was only a week. I took maybe a week or two weeks off. I was in between jobs. And if you know English and you can memorize Wow, well, that's all you needed. Well, I mean, blood test, urine test, no. <laughs> fingerprints, fingerprints. We didn't have to have fingerprints. It is licensed. The test was kind of rough, but it was, you know, you study hard. Yeah. But anyway, memorization is a lot of it. So working with Habitat for Humanity, this is the big thing that scared me that I didn't know before. When you buy with Habitat, you are in the Habitat family. You are therefore a representative. Everything you do or say is a representation of Habitat. Okay. Okay. So, I knew that the first day. <laughs> because if I had somebody tell me, oh, you gotta do this, you gotta do that, or you gotta do the other thing, like, uh, no. <laughs> you know, that's me. Basically, so just don't make, have them looking crazy. Well, you, even after you close the house, they hold you to a certain standard for your finances, for how the house looks, for everything. Mm -hmm. So because you are a representative of Habitat and you can't let anything go. You can't let life happen and where you can't cut your grass or something. You, yeah. know, you have to maintain. So basically, from the time you sign the paperwork and you apply and you're accepted, that you are a representative even before you close on the house. Okay. And, no. Can you talk to them, of course? Yeah, I get them all day, every day. So <clears throat> I'm sure you'll go over all of this, but once you get the house, like how long before you can own it? Is it up to you or? It's up to you. I mean, you have payments. Yeah. So it depends on what type of down payment assistance you get. And what some of it, um, like some of it is grants and the grants go away after 10, 15 or 30 years, depending on how much they're for. Okay. So the larger the grant, the longer time you have to stay in the house as your primary residence. So that means you can't move out and rent it. Or you have to pay that money back. Okay. Okay. Um, and it depends how long, normally it's 30 years. The mortgage is 30 years. So we'll split the payments out. Your principal interest taxes and insurance are what you pay for 30 years. Okay. And then after that, you keep paying your taxes. If you don't pay your taxes after two years, they sell your house. 
Okay. And then it goes away. You don't own it anymore. Wow. So the, gov the county government can sell your house. If you don't pay your taxes in two years, they can sell them out for one year. That's what I always told people. You never really own anything if someone can take it away from you. Mm -hmm. That's crazy. So, but can you pay your, pay it off sooner? Yeah, if you make more money and you can, absolutely. Yeah. For sure. Because some people I've spoke to, they say, no, you, you can only pay a certain amount. And others say, sure, you can pay more if you want to. So I'm like, I don't know. You can pay more if you want to. If you get it paid off faster, the grants, you have you still have to live there. You still have to right, pay right. your taxes on it. But if you pay the mortgage off early, you have no problem. Okay. Gotcha. Mm -hmm. And grants, I have to pay back, you said. Grants, saying? you don't have to. Hmm. Grants, you don't have to pay back, but like you've heard of um, Hometown Heroes? No. Florida Bond? That's both by, from Florida Housing Corporation. They're in Tallahassee. Florida Hometown Heroes has been a big thing because they allow you, they'll give you up to 5% of the purchase price of your home. Okay. Starting at 10000 minimum, up to whatever 5% is. That is a 0% interest loan for 30 years. Okay. You don't make any payments on it for 30 years. If you happen to get Florida bond, you don't start paying it back until after you've owned the property 30 years and then you start paying it back unless you want to do it earlier. Hmm. So that's Florida bond. That's a loan. Grants, like the ship funds, you have to spend, stay in those a minimum of like 10, 15, or 30 years. Like I said, it depends on how big it is. The bigger it is, the longer you have to stay in the house and yes. just maintain the um, taxes. Okay. So it depends on, I've seen as many as five different types of down payment assistance on a house. Really? Yeah. So it just depends on what you have and she, as, as it goes on and we'll see what you qualify for, yeah. she'll explain each of them to you. Because I was going to say, a lot of this is like foreign language. I don't understand any of it, but I'm listening. So but that's what, Yeah. But that's I mean, what you're here for too. Doesn't, yeah, the first couple of years I was in real estate, I was like, it was a foreign language to me, <laughs> for sure. Because my broker didn't explain anything to me. So then I started taking classes like crazy. Like, if you're not going to tell me, then I'll learn it somewhere else. <laughs> you know? <laughs> he would come yeah. in, he would sit and he would talk on the phone. And, oh, I'm so cool. I'm so great. I'm so wonderful. Just sit here and just watch me and learn from me. I'm like, yeah, right. I can really learn that. Anyway, so. Qualify for other types of home ownership programs. We work with hardworking, low income, potential home buyers in the community to build and sell homes with affordable mortgages. Meanwhile, we prepare our habitat home buyers to be successful long term home owners. We also have some rehab. So if you find like a dilapidated housing, because I've met people that just need to get out of rehab, and we could close that faster than one of these. Into what now? Rehab, renovation. So oh. if the house has good bones, if the roof, the structure of the house, the AC, the plumbing, the electrical are all good in your house, but just needs some cosmetic. Mm -hmm. She can also do that. Really? I didn't know Habitat did that as well. Not as often. Gotcha. Mostly new construction. But if it falls in guidelines, it's right. just hard to find something in guidelines. Right. Because right now it used to be, like I said, just up to 80%. Now it's 60 to 80%. So you have to fall in that little tiny wow. window. So. And that's before application, so okay. we'll figure it out. Okay, so first of all, you have to demonstrate a need. So if you're present housing, one of the following. Is it inadequate? Does it have structure problems or is it flooded? Electrical is bad, sewage problems, drainage, heating systems, hazardous conditions due to poorly maintained or substandard failure to meet city and property maintenance, maintenance standards. So if it's dilapidated, that's one of the reasons you can demonstrate need. Another way you can demonstrate need is it could be overcrowded. Your family size is too large for the building or the rooms if it's a, an apartment. Transitional, if you're currently living on somebody's couch, you know, you're in somebody else's house and you want to get out, that's transitional. Um, and when you make your application, you're going to write a letter and basically explain, you know, which one of these it is, why you have a need. Okay. Um, and you're going to get a mentor if you get that far, okay. and they'll help you with that. Um, substandard governmental, government subsidized. So if you have housing such as Section 8 or low rent program, and they tend to be kind of yucky anyway, so those are just not pleasant places to live. We don't feel safe basically and clean. 
that's what they're looking at okay as far as new goods and affordable the percentage of your monthly income that you currently spend in housing is considered when determining your need so if it's more than 35 percent of your gross monthly income that's considered unaffordable so unaffordable you say if it's more than 35 oh. percent of your gross okay monthly income and that is not affordable so being unaffordable might be one of the reasons you didn't demonstrate need okay okay your ability to pay so you're going to have to look at what type of um job you have how long you've had it at the time you make application you have to have a minimum of six months of the same job now if you're doing the same type of job four months ago <laughs> Okay, so your income must be stable. We talked about that already yeah. through your budget. So every month you're gonna have to turn in your budget. We're gonna do it together. I've got some tools and worksheets and stuff to help you with it before you even get started. So you're used to doing it by the time you get in the program. Okay. Okay. Your estimated mortgage payment should be no more than 35% of your income. That's the same thing for your rent. Just okay. The same number. Your mortgage and your other debt combined should be no more than 43% of your gross income per month. Okay. So your car payments, your credit card payments, anything you report to um, the credit bureaus, mm -hmm. plus whatever your um, housing cost is gonna be cannot exceed 43%. Okay. Okay. So you can have more than $2,000 in non-medical delinquent debt at the time of your application. Okay. And all non-medical delinquent debt must be paid off before you purchase. Okay. Okay. Credit. Okay, so your ability to meet credit obligations can be evidenced by showing that the potential homebuyer has a median credit score. Try merge. Try merge. FICO credit score of 620. We're going to change this. We're in the process of doing this. Okay. So what are they changing try, to? Try merge. So. We just say credit score. Well, credit score, there's all types of different credit scores. If you look on Credit Karma, that's a Vantage credit score. When you're purchasing a home, the banks use a FICO, and 99% use it's called TriMerge. So they look at all three credit reports. Mm -hmm. They throw out the highest, they throw out the lowest, and they work with the middle score. That's called a TriMerge. Okay. If you have more than one buyer, if you have a spouse or whatever, they look at all six scores. They throw out the highest, they throw out the lowest, and whichever one is the lowest between those two, that's the one they use. Okay. Okay. So that's called a tri merge. Okay. Thank you for teaching me something. I never heard of that. <laughs> oh, just wait. I and you explained it so I can understand. So <laughs> I usually confuse people, so I'm doing well today. Yeah, you are. <laughs> okay. okay. So cool. So if the potential homebuyer does not have at least two credit scores, they okay, so some people are called credit invisible. Okay. Um, that? that means that you don't have any credit at all. Oh, okay. So you don't apply for things. You don't have credit cards. You buy cards cash. Mm -hmm. You buy everything cash. You don't have, you know, anything to show that you're that you have that you're living actually. Right, right. <laughs> like, that you exist. <laughs> um, I have a guy who's fifty six years old. He paid for cash everything his whole life. I did and that. In the beginning, and my mom always taught me, no, you want to build credit. And I thought it was Good better mom. to mom. buy stuff. That's That was my mindset. Oh, I don't have to owe anyone. I just want to buy it. But, yeah, she, she always told me, even if you have it, just pay on it, build your credit. And, Good mom. Yeah. Excellent mom. Okay. All right. Um, if you have more than 30 days delinquent on two or more regular monthly payments for rent, utilities, oh, Basically, they don't want to see more than 30 days delinquent on anything for rent, utilities, or other credit obligations within the prior 12 months to apply. Okay. All right. Here we go. Bankruptcy must wait five years after being discharged, and you have to reestablish your credit. Student loans? No. Okay, so we won't worry about that. And you must be willing to save for your own closing costs. We require that you save $4,000 before you close. Okay. Okay. Um, we're going to start working on your credit, on your savings account now before you even apply. So at least you can have an emergency fund, and then we'll build a housing fund from there if you don't have that. Okay. So one one step at a time. Let's okay. Not too crazy. How many people in your household? 
Um, this is what I was going to ask you. So I have a total of five children, mm -hmm. but I was only going to put four and myself on the application. So it'll be a family of five. Um, because my oldest daughter, she's 18 and she's not here anyway. She's in Alaska. <laughs> and then look up the north. She um, she's, she's in Anchorage. So it's not as cold where she is. She wants to drive trucks. She went there right after graduation. Yeah. You know how much money they're making? I know. Oh my you're goodness. Right. You're right. Nope, I won't add the 18 year old in. <laughs> she's not an 18 year old. No, she's not. Okay. And everybody's income in the house. So if somebody's working already, they've got income, or if they're getting SSI, SSDI, that all has to be included in the income for down payment assistance. Maybe you're going to get what do you mean? Hmm? What do you mean by that? Okay, so if one of the kids is receiving social security for any reason, mm -hmm. that has to be calculated into the monthly calculations for gross income. Oh, okay, I didn't know that. All right. Okay, and that goes for both, well, not the loan, so if you didn't qualify for mortgage with Habitat, you could go somewhere else and you don't have to use the SSI. Okay. Anything actually, if it's not going to be three years or more, the bank won't look at it. Habitat will look at it and the down payment assistance will look at it, but not the bank. Okay. So it's weird because they have different rules for banks versus down payment assistance. Okay. So, so yeah. whatever I make plus the SSI is what you're saying. Mm -hmm. That's That'll be my income. Okay. So... You can make between four, fifty-two thousand six eighty Kanki, six eighty and seventy thousand two forty. You highlighted four. Aren't you counting myself? I'm an idiot. No, you're not. <laughs> I'm just. I'm count. asking questions. I'm count. like. I'm talking. Mm -hmm. It's okay. I'm sorry. So between fifty-six and seventy-five. Is that better? I guess. Wow, so the, the minimum income is 55000 per year? That's this year. Minimum income is on there a lot of the stuff i didn't see i was looking for you know the qualifications and how they choose but i didn't see it i don't know but it just didn't go to the right page yeah yeah it's, they, it's confusing it's a lot of stuff on yeah there. it was <laughs> okay so the financial academy is a resource for the entire community so anybody can take take the financial academy okay it does not guarantee that you'll be accepted into the habitat home buyers program nor is it a first step but it's a good first step it really is Okay. Um, you will learn how to take control of your financial future. Whether you choose to apply as Habitat or not, we will assist you in your home buying journey for you. That's where I'm a housing counselor. That's what I do. Okay. Um, so basically, again, this is no guarantee. And even after you're accepted at the program, if you're not complying, if you're not doing your volunteer hours, if you're not saving money, if you're not turning in your budgets, they can still kick you out of the program. Which makes sense. <sighs> Can you keep the chip initials and the date today? So I'm going to give you a copy, don't worry. Okay. So I can say that I've explained this to you. Sure. My initials? Initials and date. Okay. I'm um, oh, sorry. I am, what is today? The third. All right. Okay. Wow, November. My son's birthday is this month. 
do something. Birthday. On the 14th. I'm not. It's my sister's birthday. Really? See what you mean you did? Sorry. <laughs> did you write her birthday? Yes. <laughs> I do that all the time. That's why I'm like, I can't talk and write because I'm going to write what you're saying, you know? I can't walk with you. Really? Okay. Yeah, one of those. You don't really get the worst it gets. So basically, um, by coming in and doing the one-on-ones with me, and like after this first time, this is going to be the longest one. Okay. So it'll be 45 minutes to an hour, an hour and a half, depending on what our assignments are for each other and what we're going to do for each other. Okay. But my responsibility is to you, and I'm going to take your phone. I'm a counselor. Okay. So I agree to provide you with the following service. Development of spending plan, including current bank and credit card statements. That's why maybe you would bring those today. Did you bring them today? Mm -hmm. Yes, I did. Okay, so so we're going to have to reschedule, but we'll get this part of it done. Okay. Okay. So we're going to use SMART goals, and I'll teach you how to use SMART goals because we're going to make them specific, measurable, achievable, relevant, and time-based. So there's a precise goal that you have in mind. This is the way you're gonna get there as a SMART goal. Okay. This is the plan to get there. You're gonna save $4,000. Well, let's take a look at your budget. How much you owe over every month? Let's put that directly towards your savings. I mean, that's that's one of SMART goals. Your debt to income ratio. What are we gonna pay down? What are we gonna save? We'll do it together. Okay. And then we're gonna look at your credit score and figure out how to get where you wanna be with your credit score, depending on what that is. Okay. Okay. I'm sorry, I'm sorry. <laughs> okay, so we give you options when we, we explain things that financially will behoove you, make it better for you, mm -hmm. and give you options. You choose which options are best for you. One option may not work for you, and another option may. I mean, there's all different kinds of budgets. Whatever works best for you, you use it. Okay. Um, time of completion. Um, Supposed to send you an action plan after we meet. Okay, so I need to be doing that. So, so I these are things that I have to promise you that I'm going to do for you. Okay. Okay. Um, if there are resources, I have lists of resources to give you. I've got books of information that you can use. So we'll look at it. whatever I think is appropriate. I'm not going to just shove everything at you. Whatever you need. If you need to work on your debt to income, we'll work on that. If we need to work on your savings, we'll work on that. If we need to work on credit score, we'll do that. Or it might be all three over a longer period. That's fine. But everybody's not the same. There are never, I've been in real estate for over 20 years. Mm -hmm. There are never two transactions that are exactly the same. Everything is different. The market is different. The houses are different. Everything. Things are constantly changing in real estate. Mm -hmm. So. Okay, and we promise to be confidential, honest, respect you, and be professional with you at all times. Okay. Although I think I already blew that out the window. Yes, you have. Stop! Ooh, you have. I'm sorry, no. You I didn't. You unprofessional. No, I said you've been professional. <laughs> oh, <okay. laughs> no, you've been professional, oh, respectful. Okay. okay, so circle I. And then put your initials to everything that you agree. If you don't agree on something, initials. So I gotta read now. Oh my gosh! Yes, I'm gonna make you dirty. Work. What if What if I didn't know how to read? I would read to you. No, I'm just kidding. I've already been talking enough. I need. Do you need some water? Yes, please. I'll my mouth is so dry. I'm sorry. I'll do that while you're reading. Okay. I agree to the following terms of service. Why well, you gotta be excited? Too long. Mm. Thank okay. you for the cheeses. Right. Right. You got it right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I appreciate it. Okay. <clears throat> so, now, housing counseling is different than the Habitat program. Okay. So, you and I are you and I. Okay. And it's all before the application has even taken effect. So, if you decide you don't want to do this anymore, that's it. Just say, we're done, okay. period. These are all the different reasons. Mostly people just forget I exist and blow me off. And then we're gonna put the time and the date at each one. And then after three times, if you want us, you just have to reach out to us again. We're not gonna keep harassing you after. Every 30 days, the Department of HUD requires that we reach out and touch you. Okay. 
So basically, we can close your case if you're not responding to us okay. after 90 days. Okay. Okay. So just sign. Mm -hmm. Just and date. This one this morning for April. Oh. 11.30, right? I don't know why I keep forgetting. 14th. <laughs> no, don't you do that. <laughs> okay. You said I'm going to get copies of all this, right? Mm -hmm. So I don't have to memorize it. Okay. Mm -mm. No, you're going to make me memorize it? Mm-hmm. Okay. So what is this? I have to fill out? Mm-hmm. I have to do math right now in my head. No. How much money do you make? I don't know because you said I don't know. the SSI and all of that stuff. Yeah, I've gone over everything. Um, normally, this we're going to go through this together, and we're going to go through your budget together the first time we meet, and maybe one for the port fair housing. So next time we'll get the rest of it. Okay. And then we'll plan a court with it little by little. We're good. Okay. All right. Um, and all of these people on the board, these are people that got chosen, right? Yeah. Fair housing. Yeah. So how many? You said 22? Mm-hmm. And he's got three more left for first. Right. I need this. I want this. It's going to be two years out, though. You know, so it's not going to be a short-term solution. Yeah, I know. And then but I mean, kids. what have I been doing for the past few years? You know, so I may still be in the same situation two years from now. I mean, well, it's fine to do it long term, but if, if this will help you short term, right? This is a short-term solution. That's a long-term solution. Right. That's like a smart goal. Is your short-term solution is get into. Something that's not going to be changing all the time. Something that's going to be stable housing situation. Right. This is the first thing. Yeah. And to be in something that you own would be a long term goal. Mm -hmm. So short term is within the next two weeks. I think long right term now. is like two years. Yeah. So different goals for different situations. Yeah.